Okay, so hello to everyone. I'm uh, Mirko Bracale. I'm second year PhD student at ISTER in uh, Grenoble. And uh, my thesis is about wave field gradient methods to monitor the heart crust. So basically, the big question of my uh, PhD is uh, what information can we get from the gradients uh, of the wave field? And I'm studying the behavior of the wave field in two different contexts. So I'm investigating their interaction with the subsurface heterogeneities. And then more recently, I started to uh, study their behavior in uh, high scattering uh, mediums. So starting from uh, uh, the first project, uh, I here, here uh, summarized the results that uh, I had so far. So I ran uh, some simulations that uh, can be summarized uh, in uh, this table. The simulations had uh, uh, about this scheme. So I consider a fully homogeneous medium. Then I placed inside a, a region where there was a velocity change. And then I put receivers at the uh, free surface. Then I investigate uh, the sensitivity of the wave field and wave field gradients uh, in terms of uh, phase shift and uh, amplitude change. And the interesting results that I have is that uh, we observe that if we look at the amplitude change, then uh, uh, the, if we are close to the heterogeneity, the gradients show larger um, uh, amplitude. And uh, we decided so to go uh, further in this, uh, in this study by making a real experiment. So basically, in a couple of weeks, we will have this experiment in, uh, in Grenoble. In, uh, in collaboration with two colleagues from uh, from Grenoble, uh, there is a, so there is a field in which there is a foundation at one meter meter depth uh, of uh, made of cement, and we would like to use some uh, dust coupled also with the geophones and to use some active sources. So these, uh, uh, let's say, once that we decided to do this experiment, of course we uh, started to work also on simulations to understand what we are we expecting to see. So this is how it translates in uh, simulation. There is the foundation, uh, the dust line, and then uh, a source in, uh, in, this, uh, in this location. So I wanted to show here uh, this because I, I think it's uh, interesting for our research. So uh, we compute uh, uh, at the, all, uh, the, the wall array the um, ratio between the energy of the strain over the acceleration. And uh, uh, what we see here, we observed that we looked at different frequency range. And uh, we saw that uh, if we are close to the foundation of uh, uh, where, where is the, uh, the, the, the foundation that I showed you before, especially if we are at frequencies in which the wavelength is comparable with the size of the heterogeneity, we see a, li a really large peak. And uh, basically what is happening is also shown here in which we show the acceleration and the strain rate. Uh, is uh, the uh, thing is that so the uh, is uh, is not only the the gradient so the strain which is increasing but is also the acceleration which is uh, decreasing uh, if we get to the uh, close to the interface. Uh, so the explanation that we have for that uh, is that uh, first, if we use the Born approximation, if we consider the gradients, we need to take into account a medium field term, and. Uh, uh, second, uh, if we just impose the reflection conditions at the interface, we see that uh, the incident and reflected wave uh, interfere uh, in, a, in a destructive or constructive way. And uh, basically what uh, we see is that if the gradient increases, uh, then uh, the wave field agrees and uh, let's say the, the, other, the other way around. So uh, this somehow concludes the first part of, uh, of my uh, project, uh, but I would like to share with you some details because I really had to summarize a lot in uh, this presentation. But I would like to focus also a little bit on the second project, which I started to work more recently. Uh, so I'm going to uh, study the behavior of uh, the gradients in a high scattering uh, medium. And uh, at the moment, uh, I build some uh, simulations. So I build this uh, um, an heterogeneous medium in which I consider the heterogeneities uh, Laplacian correlated. And in this case, I show an example in which uh, uh, the heterogeneities are uh, the um, fluctuation is 10% uh, of the standard deviation. And before, uh, so, so far, I concluded just a preliminary analysis, which aimed just to understand if uh, our simulation were well representing the behavior of uh, uh, seismic waves in a high scattering medium. 
So uh, the first thing that we looked at uh, is the mean free path, uh, and we uh, con we <coughs> uh, we compare the, the mean free path uh, with the theoretical expectation, and we saw that there is a nice agreement at least between 0 0.5 and uh, uh, 3 hertz. And uh, then uh, we looked uh, at uh, energy decay, so we know that if we look at late coda, we are expecting to see uh, certain uh, decay. And so in this case also we see at, I just put an example at two kilometers and 6.8 uh, kilometers from, uh, from the source. And then the last thing that we looked at uh, is the equipartition uh, ratio. So we know that uh, the energy uh, conversion leads to a state in which uh, the energy is partitioned between uh, longitudinal and the share. Uh, and, the share. and so uh, in this case, uh, I show, for example, uh, at six kilometers, uh, a comparison between our observation of equipartition with uh, uh, other, with the uh, computation uh, made by, uh, in, um, with uh, using Monte, Monte Carlo uh, methods uh, with the code provided by Ludovic uh, Majoran. And uh, this is all. So just my conclusion is that we think that our uh, simulations are correctly representing the behavior of uh, seismic waves, at least in this range of frequencies. And uh, in the future, we would like so to investigate the behavior of, uh, of the gradients and also to work with the uh, uh, data set that we had uh, from uh, GFZ, uh, which, in which we have this data from, uh, from HETNA. And uh, that's it.